What is up, watch fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris. Today, I'm at London Jewelers Boutique in Manhasset, New York, and today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at four luxury pilot's watches from IWC, Longines, Breitling, and Patek Philippe. So let's go on in. All right, so I've decided on four watches today three of which are Pilot's chronographs, all under $10,000, and the final is definitely an outlier. It's right around $50,000, it's by Patek Philippe, and it is their Calatrava Pilot Travel Time. So I think that we're going to attack these price ascending. So let's start off with the Longines Big Eye. So this watch was actually the winner of the 2017 uh, Revival category at the Grand Prix. It is a 1930s inspired chronograph. It was released back in 2017. Um, Longines has, has done a really great job in the last, uh, I guess, 13 years. Their, their, their first reissue was back in 2007. So in the last 13 years, Longines has become really popular for their uh, uh, reissue watches, and this one, like I said, which was released three years ago, is no exception. It measures 41 millimeters in diameter. The thickness is 14.45 millimeters, so basically 14 and a half millimeters, and the price is $2,625. When this watch was released back in 17, and, and, and certainly even into 18, uh, when people were starting to see it for the first time, it was a big winner. I think that that was because of basically two reasons. One, Longines absolutely did a stupendous job in execution, and we'll get into that in about a second. But two, it's very hard to find a quality chronograph under even $5,000. Chronographs are inherently more complicated and expensive for brands to produce, so the pickings have historically kind of been slim. So let's get down into some of the details of this watch and really why I think it's one of the best options here on the table. The proportions are phenomenal. At 41 millimeters, which is a big number in general, specifically for me, um, I, I'm used to 36 to 39 millimeter watches, the watch wears very well, and that's because of the proportions. The overall presence is well shared between the dial and the bezel. If there was too much dial here, it, the watch would feel significantly larger. I think another area where Longines really manage the proportions well are in the lugs. These are fairly short lugs, and the entire case is done in a satin finish, making the presence a lot more subtle and in turn, wearable. The dial itself is stunning. I absolutely love this, you know, one tremendously oversized register, of course, here on the right. Longines chose not to go the faux patina route. Instead, they went with uh, a greenish color loom along with white instrumentation. Another element about this watch that I really do love is the oversized pushers. And that's not just about style, although they are pretty cool and attractive, but that's about function. Remember, we're talking about pilot's watches here today, uh, and pilot's watches are tool watches. They need to be legible and easily operated. So these oversized pushers allow, let's say, a pilot wearing a thick pair of gloves, which is very common, to just kind of grab the watch and activate. Whereas if these pushers were smaller, that would just be a more difficult process. And it's little details like that that allow a watch to not just say it's a tool watch, not just like ride the wave of, of pilot's watches, but actually be functional. The movement inside is a Longines caliber, which has been based on the Valjoux 7750, which is a very common, albeit reliable, cam lever chronograph. But this movement, which began development back in 2006 as a part of the ETA Valgrange category, is actually been kind of edited from the original 7750 and the cam lever into a much smarter, smoother, and of course, more expensive column wheel chronograph. The cam lever versus the column wheel is an ongoing debate that will probably never end. And because it's a column wheel rather than a cam lever, while both are reliable, this has much smoother action. Again, at 2,600 bucks, the value here is absolutely terrific. But let's move up market a little bit into IWC, which is a brand with a design language that I really appreciate.
That's something that you'll hear me talk about a lot in general, this idea of design language. The idea that a brand has to design watches that are true to the brand itself. Take Breitling, for example, which is actually going to be our next watch. Breitling went through a period in the 2000s where they were kind of betraying their historical design language for, you know, much larger, blingier kind of jewelry watches. And as a product, sure, Breitling did gain an audience but lost a tremendous audience as well. We're gonna find out in a minute that Breitling has done a very good job at re-earning that trust. But before we do, IWC is a brand that, to my knowledge, basically at no point have they lost um, their design language. But what makes them IWC. This model is a 41 millimeter Spitfire chronograph. It is a little bit thicker than the Longines at 15.3 millimeters, but right off the bat, the case finishing is obvious. As I mentioned before with the Longines, um, I thought it was a great decision to finish the case in satin, um, but here, you don't just have a satin finish, you have a brushed finish with bevels and fine lines. While the watch retails a little bit more than double the price of the Longines, it really is off to a good start as far as attention. The watch is powered by IWC's 69 380 caliber, which is another column wheel chronograph that is based off of the abosh of the uh, of Valjoux 7750. But there is a key difference in how these movements are made. IWC doesn't just take a delivery of these 7750 calibers and then modify them. IWC actually builds these movements from scratch. So although yes, they're not completely in-house, there is a base caliber there that is not their own. They are actually making these watches uh, themselves. Of course, you'll also notice the addition of the day and the date. But now let's get into the dial layout. Like the Longines, the IWC Spitfire Chronograph features a matte black dial with two different accent colors. We have this faux patina custard, which we can find on the hands and the indices at 12, 3, 6, and 9. And then we have the white, which brings a stark contrast. Now I have absolutely no problem with these two different tones. In fact, I've gone on record before and I'll say it again, I really enjoy faux patina. But the one problem that I see with this watch that probably would bother me as an owner, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but isn't it logical for all of the hands to be the same color? It doesn't really make very much sense that the minute and the hour hands have that, you know, faux patina custard tritium, and yet the hands in the subdial remain white. As a vintage geek that just reminds me of replacement hands, maybe not a problem for you, not the end of the world for me, but definitely something that it's kind of curious. Unlike the Longines, the crown actually rests in a locked position, so you have to unscrew it out to the second position to wind it, and then to the third to set the time. Because it is a column wheel chronograph, we also have some pretty smooth action on the chronograph. You can even hear it. As I mentioned, this watch does come in just under $6,000, and while certainly more expensive than the Longines, IWC did a pretty good job at justifying the price difference. Now, let's move up the ladder a little bit more into this, Breitling's Aviator 8 B01. This particular configuration was made to pay homage to the famous Curtis Warhawks, which was a fleet in the American Air Force during World War II. Actually, a really good friend of ours bought this watch and gifted it to his father because these Curtis Airhawks uh, are, to so many uh, Chinese and Chinese Americans, are so, so meaningful. So this is a great example of a collaboration between a major watch brand um, and something from the past, an image, a cultural icon. And I think that Breitling did a great job actually integrating it from the military green colors here to the red accents and on the case back, the actual Curtis Airhawk. Powering the watch is Breitling's B01 caliber, which is their first in-house chrono that actually took them five years to develop. And instead of me attempting to do the technical supremacy of this watch justice, I'm gonna hand this off to an expert on the matter. Hi guys, I'm Anthony. I'm one of the assistant managers here in Manhasset, and I'm gonna be going over the Breitling 01 movement. So this movement, as Christian said, took five years to develop. It actually has 346 parts, 47 jewels, and it has a 72 hour power reserve. So arguably, what I would think is one of the best in-house chronograph movements under $10,000, but most of all, it has a vertical clutch. So you'll never see the chronograph seconds hand jump forward or backwards, being that it's integrated vertically. Back to Christian. So you heard it here. 
This watch is no joke and I love what it represents. It represents this new era of Breitling moving into the future while, where they didn't for a while, still respecting you know, their heritage, their past. Now, that doesn't mean that at $8,000 they can make you know, reissues left and right, and they're not. You know, they're actually pulling and being creative. And when you're spending that kind of money, unlike when you're going into the twos and threes, you can demand that originality. And I think it's just terrific to see Breitling, which is such a cornerstone of you know, the watch industry, do so well. So before we leave, I just wanted to show you guys one more piece, which is kind of ridiculous. For me, it's too large, but uh, it's certainly a, a fan favorite. Um, this is the Calatrava Pilot Travel Time. It's in rose gold. The watch was originally introduced in steel. Um, certainly a controversial piece, but at the end of the day, it's certainly something that people go nuts for. I've always said that the dual crowns on the left remind me of Frankenstein, but it's certainly a good reminder that uh, all pilot's watches aren't chronographs, whether it's this Calatrava Pilot Travel Time, which comes in just under $50,000, or an IWC Big Pilot. Um, pilots have different needs, and there are different types of watches that do serve those needs. So although today was definitely chronograph heavy, I'm looking forward to a follow-up where we talk about you know, some of the other types of watches in the category. Thank you guys so much for watching and big thanks to London Jewelers for allowing us to come here to their boutique at the Americana Manhasset and rummage through their showcases like I love to do. If you haven't already visited the wonderful folks over at London Jewelers, they do have six locations in New York and we're constantly at their Oculus location downtown Manhattan. I hope to see you guys there soon.